What do you think would happen if I threw the one ring from Lord of the Rings into the lava? You know, if it's the melting temperature is less than about 1200 degrees C, it's going to melt. And, and we can uh, finally destroy Sauron is what you're saying. It could be done. The one ring is going to melt. Destroy Sauron. It could be done. Oh, hello. I flew here to Syracuse University at the Syracuse Lava Lab with the explicit purpose of testing one thing. Yes, I got here through the use of giant eagles, don't worry about it. I have the one ring <laughs> given to the likes of, I guess I'm an elf. I have one goal today. I'm at one of the only places in the world where they create artificial lava. Dr. Jeffrey Carson and his team use a giant crucible to heat up different materials like basalt and minerals and metals to the point where it's about 1500 degrees Celsius and it can melt just about anything. Today, this crucible will be my stand-in for Mount Doom and I want to see if it can actually melt the One Ring. Is it actually the One Ring? No. Shut up in the comments about that. No, this is gold plated titanium and Dr. Carson says this might not even get destroyed by the fires of this crucible. I guess we'll have to see. Cue the, cue the movie. Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! Okay. Go. <laughs> oh. I see, I see where it is. It's in the center. That's a lot of bubbles. I think you said you didn't want bubbles, right? <laughs> The lava has flowed, it is now cooled, it's still extremely hot. This stuff hangs on to heat like nobody's business, so I can't even hold this stuff in my hands for too long. And now we have to break it up and begin the laborious process of trying to find an LOTR needle in a haystack. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's like a million, literally a million pieces here. I don't know if nothing to it but to do it. No, I mean, <laughs> you, you can see the futility of what I'm trying to do here. Did it melt? I don't know. What would it look like if it melted? Would it look like some gold streaks? I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm looking for, really. Because if it melted, then it's totally gone. They just told me to go back in because they're doing other pours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta, I, just give me a couple more. I gotta find it, right? I, I'll just, I'll just do a couple more. What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No way. There is no, what, look at that, look at that, look at that. Do you know what that is? <laughs> that looks different than the rest of the material, doesn't it? And that looks like some elvish writing right on it. Ah, it's hot. Okay, let's go take a look at it a little bit closer. Okay, 
I'm not kidding. I was searching through that lava pile and like a million pieces for about 20 minutes and right after everyone walked away, I smashed one more time and as Sauron would have it, I found the one ring. And what you will notice is that I found the one ring. I plopped it on top of some actual lava like you would find in Mount Doom and what happened? Well, according to Dr. Carson, what happens is if the ring is at a different temperature than the surrounding lava, yes, lava will cover the ring, even though the ring might not sink down into it because the, den the densities are different. The ring will sink into the lava and the lava will cover the ring, but then a layer around it will almost instantly cool. And now this cooled bit of lava acts as a fantastic insulator such that the rest of the lava can flow around it, but it remains encased in its final basaltic resting place. Which means that if you ask me if a realistic one ring would completely melt like it was a snowball in hell, like you see in The Lord of the Rings, I would say, according to geophysics, it would. It would stay, probably float on the top unless there was a lot of agitated flow and then it would cool around it encasing the ring forever like this. But I kind of like this even better instead of being melted away. Maybe it's just sequestered in some volcanic tomb forever. And if you were to ask me what is cooler, a nice gold one ring or this, a one ring encased in real lava forever, this one would definitely be my precious. <laughs> it is pretty cool though. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant Oleksandr Mikulchuk and visiting scholar Saxon Cat. Now, if you want to join the facility, if you want to talk with me every day on Discord, drape on a silky white lab coat, see private members only live streams with me, not like that, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here each and every week. She loves when I do that. And look, there's, there's over a thousand of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. I know what you're thinking. Kyle, we heard you do a little bit of a Gollum impression, and we've heard through the grapevine that your Gollum impression, you claim, is 100% screen accurate. You've said it many times, even publicly. Can you please do more of that accent for us? No. Thanks for watching. <coughs> Thanks for watching. Precious.